about different aspects of uh, why, as a scientist, I'm here to speak out uh, against the, uh, the so-called Creation Museum. Why I'm here next to this museum of misinformation. And um, the point is that, as I'll talk about later, this really has nothing to do with religion. It's a question of science. And, um, and this is the antithesis of modern science. The way science is done in the modern world is that we scientists ask questions and we let nature give us the answers. That's the opposite of what's done here. Here they claim to know the answers already. And whatever nature says is unimportant because they know the truth. And they want to pick and choose things that support their specific misinterpretation of the Bible. And that, as a scientist, is repugnant. It's very important that if we try and keep an open mind, and we've, I've been accused of intolerance because of my concerns about this museum. In fact, I try to be more tolerant. I try and keep an open mind to the evidence that nature provides. In fact, it seems to me that's what an open mind is based on, is forcing your beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality rather than the other way around. And uh, this museum is based on one particular absurd interpretation of the Bible. That absurd interpretation is that the, that the earth, all life, and the universe is 6,000 years old. Now that is inconsistent not just with biology and evolutionary biology, but it's inconsistent with everything we know about the universe. Absolutely everything. Chemistry, physics, biology, geology, astronomy, absolutely everything we know about the universe tells us that this is nonsense. And it's, in fact, I, uh, I'm on the advisory board of something called DEFCON, which uh, is an organization which tries to preserve uh, the teaching of science in this country for our children. And one of the things I did do, which you can find on the DEFCON site, which is www.defconamerica.org, is I wrote a parent's guide to uh, the museum. It's called the top 10 reasons why the universe the sun, the earth, and life are not 6,000 years old, a primer. And I try to point out that it's not just, as I say, it's not just biology, it's many, many things. And I'll talk about those in a second. The other thing I want to talk about is why, why should we, why protest a museum? I mean, this, they have every right to build a private institution, but what they don't have the right to do is lie about science and do it with impunity. It's important that those of us who do science for a living speak out about that. They could have called this a theme park. They could have called it an amusement park. And that would indicate that that's what it was. But they call it a museum. And a museum implies it's an educational institution. And as a, what they're doing here is the opposite of education. They're confusing children about what science is and what it isn't. As I say, they're telling kids that science is really a story. And my story is as good as your story. And how dare I, as a scientist, claim that my story is any better than their story? Well, science isn't just a story. Science is, makes predictions about the world, predictions that can be tested, tested, and predictions that impact upon our lives, predictions that allow us to develop new vaccines against diseases, predictions that allow us to develop forms of transportation that take us around the world. If you believe the Earth is 6,000 years old, then you have to renounce all of science. And in fact, you shouldn't be flying in airplanes, driving cars, listening to the radio, because the very physics on which all those things depends tells us that the world is far older than 6,000 years old. And let, you know, I'll give you the top 10 reasons. I'm not going to read them here because uh, it's a little long. But I just, just want to give you a sense of the kind of diversity of arguments against a 6,000 year old universe. First of all, the Big Bang really happened. It's not an invention, it's not a hypothetical thing. In fact, last year's Nobel Prize in Physics was based on observations of radiation coming to us from the Big Bang. Radiation that's been traveling for almost 14 billion years throughout the universe. And when we look at it, it gives us a picture of what the universe looked like in its infancy, 14 billion years ago. It was such a profound discovery that it won the Nobel Prize in Physics. And that radiation has been cooling off from that hot Big Bang, and it now has a temperature of three degrees above absolute zero. Precisely what you would predict if the universe is 14 billion years old. When we look out at the sky, we see stars and galaxies. We don't see one galaxy. 
we see 400 billion galaxies. Each galaxy has hundreds of billions of stars. If all those galaxies were within 6,000 light years of us, so we could see them within 6,000 years, we'd be burned to a crisp. There's no room to fit 400 billion galaxies in such a small size. So you just have to look out with a telescope to know the Earth and the universe is not 6,000 years old. Now, radioactive dating has been, has been argued against in this museum, but it's used all the time. And we can, in fact, measure the life of, of relatively short-lived things on the, on, the, on the time period of about five to 10,000 years by using carbon-14 dating. But beyond that, we can date rocks and minerals by using much longer-lived radioactive substances, substances like potassium and thorium and uranium. And they tell us, when we measure them, they tell us that the rocks in the Earth are four and a half billion years old, which coincides, by the way, precisely with the determined age of the Sun, which is 4.55 billion years old. There are simpler ways to know the Earth isn't 6,000 years old. In 1987, we saw an exploding star on the other side of our galaxy, a supernova, explode. It was 150,000 light years away. That meant the light from it took 150,000 years to get to us. If it was closer, again, we would have been burned to a crisp. But we could measure it and determine that everything agreed with the observation that it was 150,000 light years away, meaning that that explosion happened 150,000 years ago, not 6,000 years ago. The fact that the sun shines, well, not today, but every now and then the sun shines here, and when it does, we're looking back a million years. Well, the, the light from the sun takes eight minutes to get to us, but what you may not realize is that the energy emitted in the center of the sun takes a million years to get to the surface. If the sun were 6,000 years old, it wouldn't be shining. We can measure continental drift. It's not a hypothesis. We can actually measure with satellites the fact that the continents are separating at the same rate your fingernails are growing, about five centimeters a year. And if you work it out, 250 million years ago, the continents were together. Well, when you compare the fossils and the geology of the parts of the different continents that were supposed to have been together, you find out they're identical. Absolutely consistent with the, the continents having been merged 250 me million years ago and with a constant rate of continental drift that we can measure today. Geology tells us when we look at rock strata and look at the layers of rocks in the Earth everywhere on the Earth, it's consistent with a four and a half billion year old Earth. But if you're not worried about that, if you don't believe the rock strata, you can look at ice cores in Antarctica. We can actually take ice cores in Antarctica and it's like measuring tree rings. As the ice freezes each year, you see a layer. And we can measure back 500,000 years from ice cores in Antarctica. Again, the Earth isn't 6,000 years old. We measure fossils on Earth of varying ages that give us a consistent history of the biology of the planet back to four billion years ago. Five hundred million years after the Earth formed. Life was here on Earth. And the fossil record is overwhelming and vast. It's not sporadic. It's consistent again with an old Earth. Evolution itself has been measured, measured and predicted by measuring the genetic relationships between species. When we do that and we measure the rate of mutations between species, once again, we can follow the history of life on Earth back millions of years. And finally, humans themselves have left us a record that the Earth is older than 6,000 years old. We actually have discovered cave paintings and art in cave dwellings that are 30,000 years old. One of my favorites is on a cave in, in France where an adult took a young child and put his or her hand up against the wall and sprayed paint to leave the image of a child's hand. And I like to think that that adult did that for a reason. They brought them there and left that message so they'd leave an imprint of their existence for a long time. They left us a message of their existence. And how sad it is that some people want to turn back on that wonderful message that they left us. So the science tells us in every single way we know that the Earth is older than 6,000 years old. Now I just want to close a little bit by